2010 was a weird time for football boots, especially when you're talking about the Nike versus Adidas battle. Looking back at a lot of these boots from 10 years ago, I don't think many of them are all that great by today's standards, but from a tech standpoint, Nike was absolutely killing Adidas and it showed in regards to general interest as well as sales numbers. At least until the 2010 World Cup when Adidas would release this and this the synthetic and leather versions of the F50 Addy Zero. With the F50 Addy Zero not only being the lightest boot the world had ever seen, but also a boot that was significantly lighter than the Mercurial Vapor and Superfly competition at the time. And to increase the overall appeal, they also offered it in a leather upper variation, which not only featured surprisingly decent leather, the boot was also extremely lightweight, and again, way lighter than anything on offer from the Nike brand. Hello and welcome to another retro review reboot video where we take an older boot go over all the technical details talk about what that boot represented at that point in time and also compare it to the equivalent model that's available now. I really appreciate the support on this series so far because I do enjoy making these videos. If you want to see this series continue, please support it with a like, leave a suggestion for what you'd like to see next down below in the comments. And also, if you're not subscribed to the channel already and don't want to miss out on new videos every single week on everything football boots, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So let's start with the original packaging where you'll have noticed that the box does look a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. White in color with black stripes and then this very colorful graphic that is very distinctive from the Adidas Jabulani, which of course was the controversial World Cup match ball from 2010. Either way, open up the box and on the inside you of course get the boots themselves. No extras as far as string bags go. The Predator came with a string bag if I remember correctly, but that really varied from model to model with the Addy brand. But what they did include as an extra with the F50 Addy Zero were an extra set of comfort insoles, or as Adidas like to call them, the comfort sock liner, which of course would be a slightly more padded variation of the ultra lightweight variation that was already in the boots, of course featuring a nice synthetic suede liner on the surface. As for the boots themselves, let's have a quick little history lesson on the F50 line, because it started all the way back in 2004 with this guy right here, which is an excellent pair of football boots, but the reason why this was introduced was to compete against Nike's Mercurial series, which was basically the introduction of the speed boot back in 1998. By 2004, they had the Mercurial Vapor 2. And as you can see, when you compare those to these, they are quite a ways off. And you can understand that at that point in time, Addy was definitely the top football boot brand, or at least one of them. Nike was more of an up and comer, but the popularity of this kind of technology forward concept that Nike had with the Mercurial series, specifically the Vapor, is something that intrigued a lot of people. So in response to that, in 2006, Adidas would come out with their own super high-tech speed boot in the form of the F50.6 Tunit, which was basically a modular football boot. You had an upper, an internal chassis, and then studs that screwed into the bottom, basically allowing you for complete customization of three different elements of your football boot. Cool concept, one that ultimately didn't work that well. The boot was very heavy, very clunky, and basically the exact opposite of the Nike Mercurial series, not to mention also quite expensive. So as you might expect over the years, that concept didn't really catch on and the Mercurial would gain more and more popularity in the speed boot category. That would all culminate to what was easily the best variation of the F50 tunit in the form of the I tunit, which not so bulky, really good looking, actually a decent pair of football boots, but again, in comparison to Mercurial's, heavier and bulkier and just a concept that did not catch on. So as far as the speed boot category was concerned, even though the Mercurials at that time weren't incredible by today's standards, they were still way better than any other option that you had. That was until 2010 when Adidas launched the F50 Addy Zero, getting rid of the Tunit modular system and just going for something that was as thin and lightweight as possible and people really responded to it. And I know what some of you guys are thinking, who cares about the weight of your boots? It doesn't really matter all that much. And I think that's a fair statement to make now because all modern football boots are really light. But going back 10 years ago, there was a significant weight difference from one boot to the next. And this was just a major step forward in comparison to all of its competition, which I wanna show you now in real time against its main competition, the 2010 World Cup Mercurial Superfly 2. So we're gonna move over to the scale right here and I'm going to weigh the synthetic versions as well as the leather version. Now these are a nine and a half, 
These are a size 10 and these ones are a size nine. So slight differences in sizing, but you're still gonna get a very similar comparison. We're actually gonna start with the Superfly 2. You can see that they weigh in at 8.4 ounces, the equivalent of 239 grams, which by today's standards, is not exactly super light. That's the same weight as the current Adidas Predator model if you want a modern day comparison. We'll throw on the synthetic version of the F50 Adi Zero, which is half a size bigger, and you can see that they weigh in at 5.9 ounces, the equivalent of 167 grams. That is a tremendous weight difference, and if this was available in today's football boot market, it would be the lightest one that you can buy. We'll throw on the leather variation as well, just change this back. Again, these are a size nine, so half a size smaller than the Superflies, but a leather upper rather than synthetic. They weigh in at 5.7 ounces, the equivalent of 161 grams. So regardless of whether or not you wanted a synthetic or leather upper, you had a much lighter alternative to Nike's super high-tech flagship, very fancy and very expensive speed boot. People often ask me why Nike doesn't do carbon fiber sole plates anymore, and I think the 2010 F50 Addy Zero is a huge reason why. Addy proved that you don't need fancy carbon fiber and really fancy materials, you just need lightweight plastic with the proper design to create a football boot that has a sole plate that is equally as strong as carbon fiber, but also significantly lighter and obviously a lot cheaper to produce as well. Now, the reason why the F50 Addy Zero was so light had very little to do with the upper. I think that's a big misconception that the upper plays a big role in how heavy the boot is going to be. There's not a big weight difference between leather and synthetic most of the time. And unless you're adding like big rubber striking elements or material that does legitimately have some weight to it, there's not a lot of weight to the upper. All of the weight is gonna come from the sole plate, which is where Addy managed to take out a ton of weight versus traditionally designed football boots up until this point with their sprint frame technology, which is basically a single piece of plastic that makes up the entire sole plate, obviously connects to the studs and does feature an external heel counter as well. Some kind of rib design through the midfoot for added structure. And there were some issues down the line with this sole plate cracking, but again, it was the first introduction of a brand new technology. Either way, this is a design concept that would basically remain in the Adidas brand up until this very day. We technically don't have sprint frames anymore. We did for a long time. They have since rebranded the X-Line sprint frame as a speed frame, which I realize is not that clever on Adidas's part, but it's still some variation of this. So like I said, this has been a very influential boot, not just on other brands, but also on Adidas as well. And then of course, this particular stud pattern, this being the FG variation, this is a layout that I don't think we realized it at the time, but again, it would have a huge impact on Adidas because every single boot to come out from the brand since the 2010 F50, aside from the Predator Addy Power, has had some variation of this stud pattern layout, which I'm not necessarily mad about. It works really well, especially on firm natural grass. But at this point in time, 10 years down the road, I would like to see something at least a little bit different. The crazy part though, and I think the reason why people responded so positively to the F50 Addy Zero was the fact that it was just so much lighter than anything else you could buy. The experience of putting these on your feet back in 2010 was pretty incredible. And the fact that Nike was really pushing this kind of high tech carbon fiber elite series thing that they were doing where all of the boots were between three and $400, which is what everybody thought at that point you needed to pay to get the lightest possible, highest performing product. And then Adidas came out with these for basically half the price and said, nah, that's not the way to do it. And people really responded to that. So for the first time in a number of years, and at least for the first time in the speed boot category, Adidas really caught Nike off guard. As for the two upper variations, the version that I think Adidas was really trying to push in the marketing material was definitely the synthetic model, which was the lighter of the two, hence the reason why they wanted to push it. Also, I have to assume that this was probably cheaper for them to produce rather than the leather upper variation, but that's a discussion for another day. The material used was called Sprint Skin, which I think is a very appropriate name given the concept of the football boot. And the appeal of this was that it was basically a single layer of material and it's just super thin it's relatively flexible it does have a very plasticky feel by today's standards and then internally you can see there's kind of like this silver 
kind of cage or added structure element along the side of the boot, which is kind of an interesting way of doing things just to add a little bit of reinforcement to what would otherwise be a super thin material. This texturing on the outside is relatively smooth until you get to this area right here on the medial side, kind of in the striking area of the foot where it has this very subtle texturing that actually is pretty much the same thing that we had on, on the Jabalani match ball, which is a pretty cool idea. Not a ton of extra grip, but definitely something that would be noticeable in comparison to a Mercurial Vapor, which had a more slick finish to the upper. It was also kind of interesting that they did go for an off-centered lacing system on a speed boot. That's not something that we had really ever seen from the Mercurial series, and it's really still haven't the laces run down the middle. So I think that was something that they did to really differentiate it from the Mercurial. And honestly, I really like that aspect of this boot. It has a nice deep lacing system, so you're able to get a very secure fit. And then of course, a low cut design with this kind of unnecessary tab at the back that really doesn't do anything, but I do think that it does look quite cool. And honestly, from a silhouette and looks perspective, this is easily one of the best looking speed boots ever to come out of the Addy brand. And then as for the leather version, it took the exact same sole plate and stud pattern, but then gave you a leather upper. You can see in the area where the stripes are here on the lateral side of the midfoot, that is actually a synthetic leather material. And that wraps all the way around to this area here on the medial side, but everything else on the upper, including the tongue, which I think is pretty clear to see, is actually made from a cow skin leather material that they called Galeo leather, which Galeo is not an animal. Again, it's just kind of a made up term like sock liner from Adidas. I'm not sure why they did that. It's not quite kangaroo leather quality like we had on the Addy Pure available at the time, but it's still pretty decent. And again, was pretty well your only option for a speed boot with an actual proper leather upper that was as light as this was. So it was kind of an oddball football boot, but one that I think had a lot of appeal because there were people that loved the idea of speed boots but weren't necessarily sold on the concept of synthetic uppers at that point in time because again looking back 10 years ago synthetics have definitely come a long way they've had a very plasticky feel back then so amongst the boot enthusiast community I would say the leather version was definitely a lot more popular you obviously had stitching to reinforce the leather so pretty traditional in that regard it didn't have any of that same texturing in this area of the foot but in terms of fit and overall comfort I think many would argue who tried both versions of the boot at least that the leather version was definitely the more comfortable and better fitting version of the boot especially once broken in so as you can see i have both versions on feet although i will admit that the size 10 here in this synthetic model is a little bit too big for me but i'm actually surprised at how good both of these boots feel 10 years after the fact because i haven't really had them on my feet in a very long time the shape of the boot is still quite good, especially for the leather variation. It's a little bit lower volume, a little bit more snug than the current X line, which I think some people wouldn't like as much. But in terms of giving you a nice close wrap, honestly, really impressive. So I'm very happy with that. And I think a lot of that has to do with the deeper lacing system versus what we have on the X line now, as well as just the standard tongue rather than a one piece upper. As far as the synthetic model is concerned, obviously they both feel super light, but the synthetic does feel a little bit plasticky by today's standards. Certainly some of the Tajian synthetic uppers we'd get from the Mercurial line several years after these came out would be a lot better. Vapor 8, 9, 10, and 11 are the ones that specifically come to mind. But as far as like leather speed boots go, this OG Leather F50 is arguably one of the best ever made and does still feel really good by today's standards. The one thing I will say about both of these boots is that there is a little bit of a lack of padding in the heel area. So there is a little bit of kind of I guess tightness and potential, I guess, concern for blisters in the heel area, which I remember back in the day when I had these boots, that is something that was pretty common during the break-in process. So I think the heel construction in the current X-Line is certainly a lot more comfortable. The boots obviously feel ridiculously lightweight on feet, basically like you aren't wearing anything at all, which I think is a huge appeal of this particular product. Width-wise, they fit snug, but definitely not narrow. So I think as long as you don't have super wide feet, they'll definitely fit most people. And as far as sizing is concerned, they do run true to size for those that are wondering if you are looking to order a pair online, which might be a little bit difficult to find now, given the fact that they are now 10 years old. Which leads us into the final question of this video, and that is which Adidas speed boots are better? The ones that they make now or the ones that they made 10 years ago? And honestly, now that I have the two side by side, I think that there's a fair argument to be made that Adidas speed boots, at least, 
haven't really changed that much over the last 10 years. If we took what I think most people would argue are the two best versions of the boots in question, the leather version of the OG F50 and the X19.1, when you have them side by side, they're not as different as you'd expect boots 10 years apart to be. If you compared the Mercurials from then to the Mercurials from now, there's a tremendous amount of evolution. But if you look at just the sole plates on these two boots, it's the exact same stud pattern. The sole plate construction is borderline the same as well. They changed the name from sprint frame to speed frame, so I guess there's that. But even the heel counter, if you look at the little extended tail on the back of the boots, they're just not that different from each other. And don't get me wrong, I don't necessarily have a problem with this. We've all heard the saying, if it's not broken, don't fix it. But when you're talking about 10 years of evolution in the football boot industry, especially considering how many new boots Adidas has put out since the 2010 F50 Adi Zero, it does kind of make you question if football boots are really progressing all that much. With that in mind, if I were picking between all of these boots to play in right now, from a comfort perspective especially, I definitely would pick the X19.1. It is my personal favorite of this bunch. But with that said, if you improve the heel construction in this OG F50, I think you have a football boot that is equally as good in terms of performance characteristics. It's gonna be a little bit lighter and it would be equally as comfortable. So has there really been that much progress made here? I mean, I guess we have a laceless speed boot now, which I think is kind of contradictory to what the speed boot concept is all about. But if you like laceless boots, I think it's a solid option. As a whole though, I'm not sure that the amount of progress that you would expect there to be in 10 years has actually been made. And there you have it guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you have any questions or any suggestions for other boots you'd like to see a retro review of, leave that down below in the comment section and I'll take a look at everything you guys have to say. If you're not subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you don't miss out on when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. And other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.